These different forces, as we see in the Hermetic worldview, they're associated with the planets. They work upon us unconsciously. These aren't masses of rocks mm -hmm. moving through the solar system. They have conscious intelligence, just as Gaia, Earth has herself. Mm -hmm. The more conscious that we can become of these influences and sort of form a relationship to these archetypal energies that the planets represent, the more agency and control we have over our own destiny. I began to just apply some of these different ideas into my creative practice. What yeah. you did is so powerful and beautiful because it gives the representation for the rest of us to be able to, to see visually. We can slowly begin to purify, in an alchemical sense, the contents of our own inner world and the contents of our mind. Many of you have heard of the word hermetics, but it remains a lofty concept. Marlena Seven Bremner has taken it upon herself to articulate these texts into one beautiful volume of work, driven by artistic renditions of what came from her Dark Night of the Soul. Welcome. You've done such beautiful work here, and there's a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of depth to it. Thank you. And Rachel. really, it's like if someone wants to take hermetics on, I can't think of a more wonderful place than, you know, the standard on Amazon, uh, Corpus Hermeticum, anybody can do that. But I love your book. This is beautiful. I would like to f first start out because you're, you appear to be quite young. And clearly, you got on your path early. You lived around the world, military dad. Mm -hmm. But some, let's talk a little bit about your time in Germany and what happened later in life that really caused you to go through what I mentioned earlier, kind of a dark night of the soul, so people can get to know you a bit. Yeah, well, I was born in Germany, but didn't live there long. Mm -hmm. We left when I was about four, but I think it was a pretty um, formative experience growing up those four years. That imprint and, mm -hmm. of your being, being born there. Yeah, and Frankfurt, where I was born, was also a very important alchemical um, city in after the Renaissance, and a lot of really important books were published there. So. Um, it feels significant that that's where I came into the world. Mm -hmm. um, Born on that dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I grew up in a, in a household with a very artistic mother and a very scientific kind of um, atheist father. And we didn't grow up with religion because they'd both rejected it in their own ways. But my mom was quite the spiritualist. So there was a lot of that influence mm -hmm. for me growing up. And... Um, felt very connected with nature as a child and interested in um, the polarities from a young age, interestingly. like Yeah, that, no, that, that would kind of lead you right toward hermetics at yeah. one point or another, it was inevitable. Yeah. But what was it, and on what level were you interested in polarity as a very young girl? Well, just the very basic relationship between the sun and the moon. Like mm -hmm. this would feature in my artwork quite often. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, the union of the opposites just sort of seemed like an important concept. And I don't know why that came to me. Um, but, you know, it was sort of an unconscious thing going on at that point. And as I developed and studied different spiritual traditions and different healing modalities, um, I eventually came to find polarity therapy. Mm -hmm. And I was living in Olympia, and I found a teacher there. Olympia, Washington. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And started studying and practicing polarity therapy, which is largely based in hermetic principles. And these ideas of um, the elements forming the human body and the energy of the caduceus and the chakras. and um, Complementary and complementary mm -hmm. types of coming together for alchemical you know, transformation, yeah. Yeah, and essentially helping people to return to their connection with source mm -hmm. and to find the balance between the polarities rather than being pulled by attraction and repulsion back and forth between Forever us. till we die. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was my introduction to hermetics, and it was during the time that I was still studying polarity um, that I was also introduced to alchemy, and... As you mentioned, I went through a very dark night of the soul. Um, things were kind of just thrown upside down for me overnight. And um, I didn't know how to help myself anymore, mm -hmm. even though I had all these tools and I was going to school for energy medicine and had all this uh, wonderful healing energy around me. It was um, like an emotional shock, trauma? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was an emotional shock and a trauma. 
and felt like my entire nervous system had been rerouted basically overnight. Yeah. And so all of the things that used to help me self-regulate no longer helped. Mm -hmm. So I had to find a different way through this um, because going on long walks, meditation, going to yoga classes, all these things that had been helpful would actually trigger panic and anxiety. This whole notion of what happens when you go into an emotional shock and the way it affects the nervous system, mm -hmm. and then the way the nervous system in turn starts imprinting the subconscious mind and starts creating these patterns. And it really can become very illogical, like you said, things mm -hmm. that used to make you feel good. You try to move, move through that. And like you said, you start to feel panic stricken. It's like, yeah. how has this been turned upside down? And we'll talk about that in a moment. Continue with your experience. Yeah, so at the time, I um, was just coming back into my artistic practice. I'd given it up for a long time, went to school and was studying energy medicine, but I decided that I wanted to start painting. So I started to teach myself how to oil paint, and specifically, I didn't want to be influenced by too many other mm -hmm. artists and stuff. So I made a point Good to not look at a lot of art and yeah. to not like take lessons, but to just learn the basics and... Um, from there, everything else was trial and error. And I was also deeply immersed in my initial studies of alchemy. And this was through the lens of Carl Jung, so a very psychological perspective on the alchemical art. And I began to just apply some of these different ideas into my creative practice. And it was through that that I was able to take these dark things that I was experiencing and transform them and able to take things from my own unconscious, express them outwardly in this sort of spontaneous way. Yes. And then a dialogue began to unfold between me and my work and between the paintings and my inner world. And it was a very healing, transformative process. And, you know, for me, this was a very difficult time and it took several, several years to get through. Mm -hmm. But by the end of it, I had completely um, changed. I'd become a much more grounded, integrated person. And you had an offering for the world through the alchemy of your own yeah. experience and work transformed into art. I mean, yeah. really amazing art. Yeah. So everything that I've written in the book is really based in that experiential knowledge that I gained through that process and through going through these different phases of transmutation, going into the dark night of the soul, which in alchemy is called the Negredo. Mm -hmm. And it's associated with death and with the color black and with the planet Saturn. And so these very heavy, like, Saturnian energies, also with the metal lead. And it's this process of going inward and confronting the darkness within ourselves, but also acknowledging it and integrating it. So we, we don't just see our shadow and push it away and reject it. We integrate it, and it becomes a part of us and a power that then we can hold. Well, the darkness and the pain informs. Mm -hmm. It tells us what has yet to be healed, what's out of balance, right? Yeah. And so pushing those feelings and emotions away is, I find, very detrimental. It'll find you. Mm -hmm. It'll come find you one way or another. It might mm -hmm. take. It might decide it needs to settle somewhere in the body. Oh, yeah. You know, it'd mm -hmm. come maybe haunt you in the next lifetime, but you mm -hmm. can't get away from it. So what yeah. you did is so powerful and beautiful because it gives the representation for the rest of us to be able to to see visually. You know, for me, it's a process of, like a child, feel everything. Mm -hmm. just get it out, just feel everything in the moment and let it pass where you're crying and then you're laughing, yeah. however long you need to, so that it, it literally can be released, but you've taken it a step far further, which I think is why you have all these amazing beings around you. You came here to do important work. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about a little bit Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people right now, a lot of people are suffering right now. They're in anger, they're in angst, they're in confusion. It's like, because mm, tr we are going through a transformative process as a species. And we're trying to kind of punch our way out of a paper bag a mm. lot of times. So let's talk about what you mentioned a little bit ago. You had, you had this experience that started trashing your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about looking at it in the, con you can go to Jung Hermetics, but in the context of what happens when we have trashed, trashed our nervous system through excessive trauma, anger, sadness, et cetera, and how that starts leaching into and then affecting other parts of the mind complex. Mm. Well, yeah, these different 
forces, as we see in the hermetic worldview, they're associated with the planets and they work upon us unconsciously. So the planets are affecting us whether or not we're conscious of it, but if we're unconscious of it, which many people are, then we're being pulled in these continuous states of attraction and repulsion. And they are driving us um, and basically determining our fate. And the more conscious that we can become of these influences and sort of form a relationship to these archetypal energies that the planets represent, the more agency and control we have over our own destiny and the more creatively we can engage with reality and with our life. Yes, because it does have an actual effect on us and our own little personal complex mm -hmm. that we carry around. The whole um, the axiom as above, so below is really quite literal to what you're speaking of. Exactly. So yeah. if we were able to, rather than look and look at the model in your you know seventh grade astronomy class of balls and sticks mm -hmm. and saw each one of these planets as a massive archetypal being that each represents an opportunity for growth, learning, and experience mm -hmm. in our solar system mm -hmm. and affects us directly on Earth like benevolent teachers, even Saturn, even Pluto, mm -hmm. as benevolent teachers. And then I, I like to take it down to the personal so you get a hit physic I mean you get a hit emotionally now your your electrical and nervous system is all trashed now it's starting to rewire some kind of a memory an event in the subconscious which mm -hmm. is going to come back and keep influencing you until it has been transformed such as what you did if you care to explain that a little bit more so people understand what happens after trauma and you can turn to young if you want yeah yeah well i think often what happens is we have these traumatic events and yes, we keep getting pulled back to them in different ways in order to heal them and integrate them. And another thing that happens is we reject the parts of ourselves that we don't want to see, that we don't want to look at. And then we end up projecting those outward into the world. And so we see the enemy everywhere outside of us. And we encounter all these problems in our relationships and in our work life. and. Um, you know, these negative expressions of things that are actually within us that we've completely rejected. And until we're able to reclaim those shadow aspects and recognize them as parts of ourselves, we're gonna to continue to do that and they'll just keep popping up in new forms.